Hi everyone, what is up? My name is Haley. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you did not know, now you do. Hey you guys, what's up? In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about things I've never seen in Germany. So with that being said, keeping this intro, hopefully short, simple, and sweet. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up because it's free and it helps me out tremendously. And if you wanna have a conversation down below in the comment section, you're more than welcome to. So the first thing that I'm gonna be talking about is a garden gnome, y'all. When I first came to Germany, I don't know where, I guess it's just cause where I live in the United States, I don't know, but people say that Germany's known for its garden gnomes. And I can literally list on both hands how many garden gnomes I've seen my whole entire stay here. Like we have this literal, I don't know, It's I'll put a picture here. It's this little man, he has, I think, red clothing and a red hat and like a white little beard. He reminds me of Papa Smurf a little bit, just in white. And we associate this with Germany. I don't know if they are really German garden gnomes. I never looked it up and I don't know if I've talked about this or not on my channel, but I honestly thought everyone was gonna have one of these things in their yard. Lo and behold, nobody has this. <laughs> in their yard. If you are a German, you have this in your yard, please let me know. I feel like maybe this was an older thing, an older tradition. Maybe your grandparents did it. Great grandparents don't know. But I feel like in the modern times, this is not something that people do. I, in my yard, have a pig. I also have a Buddha. And those are basically my garden gnomes. And you know, they bring me luck and they bring me kindness and good karma and good energy and they protect me. <laughs> at night, they keep the evil spirits away. But a whole garden gnome? No, no, I, I, I just don't see them ever, like once in a blue moon. And when I do see it, it's always a big deal. Cause I'm like, look at that garden gnome. And then no one is excited to see the garden gnome. Or if they are German, they're like, wow, that's a cool garden gnome. Because they've also never seen a garden gnome before. Like they're not scattered in everybody's yards and everyone just has like a garden gnome measuring contest to see whose garden gnome is the biggest and best. That just doesn't happen here. So the next thing that I'm gonna be talking about is an association that a lot of people in the United States have about Germany. And I feel like it's due to the simple fact that anything in Bavaria that we find cool in the United States, we put the Germany sticker on it and label the whole country as doing that. And I'm here to burst a few bubbles and it is this dang beer krug Mas Krug, Krug in general, a Stein as we like to call it in English. And this is a beer mug with a deckel, a top, and this is from Mike's mom, 1998. You guys, I love this thing. She has the best knickknacks in all of Germany. You can argue with me about that, but she has really cool stuff. This is just, I would say a novelty or a tradition. There are people that use it as a novelty, but there are also people that use it as a tradition. And I will even go as far to say that there is this equator in Deutschland. It's called the Weißwurst equator. I can never say Wurst. Once you go below that line in Bavaria and what's the other part of Germany that it, it hits, there's a, there's a line y'all basically. And anything below that line, you might find this. Anything above that line, it might be rare to find this. In my opinion, this is a more Bavarian centralized tradition. It might be common in other parts of Germany, but I remember I said that one time and people got so mad at me in the comments section. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm never saying that again. And so you're not gonna go to a restaurant and get one of these. Maybe, but it's just not common. You might get this, but even this is pushing it sometimes. You'll probably get something that looks like this and this. I think this is for a Weissbier, this is for a Helles, maybe. I'm always confused by which glasses, which, cause I don't drink beer like that. But you have different mugs for different glasses and also dependent on the region you are in, you're also gonna get different mugs for different beers and drinks that you get. But these are very Bavarian oriented, I feel like. We are in a Bavarian household here. And so we will be drinking out of the Bavarian glasses. Moving on to the next point, which is a deodorant stick or a stick of deodorant. And this is sort of a hit and miss point because of course Germany does have sticks of deodorant, but it's very hard to find them in the same, I would say, variety as their rollerball counterparts and their spray counterparts and I'm using Mike's deodorant you guys because I'm leaving in a couple of days <laughs> and I'm too cheap to buy a 55 cent deodorant spray from DM. These are very common for women and men. They have a whole bunch of different scents. I'll try to find pictures of shelves at stores with deodorant 
but to where you can just go and find a huge variety of sticks like this that we have, let's say in the United States, it's not happening here in Germany. And I don't know why or what the reasoning is behind this. If I put on my German thinking logic cap, which doesn't always work, <laughs> I'm assuming that it's maybe too much plastic, too much waste, too bulky maybe for the average German consumer. Maybe they don't like the consistency that comes with this and a liquid doesn't really ball up or leave as much residue as this. That's maybe some of the reasons as to why it's not that common here. But if you do love a thick stick of deodorant that you can just turn up like this, um, you're not gonna find it. I mean, you will find some, but you won't find as much as you will in the United States. So please don't come heartbroken about deodorant, but you will come to love this spray. I promise you that. It's just, ooh, mm, that smells very good. So the next thing that I never see in Germany is roadkill. And I brought this up many years ago and I'm bringing it up currently due to the simple fact that I saw a dead creature on the side of the road recently. It was a toad and I was shocked to see it. And I remember first coming to Germany and assuming there would be a lot of roadkill due to the simple fact that a lot of people are driving really fast. You know, splat, dead deer, dead pig, dead birds. Like in Florida, we have alligators, snakes, people's pets, I'm trying to think bears, deer. I've seen a dead cougar before or puma, I don't know, puma, mountain lion, whatever the heck they're called in Florida. Everything that you can imagine under the sun just being on the side of the road left there. And that does not happen in Germany. Like I said, I could probably count on one hand, on half of a hand, how many dead animals I've seen on the side of the road. And I feel like there's a few reasons as to why this is, the first one is that someone gets called here. I don't know if there's a hotline, I don't know what the number is, but you can call and say, hey, there's a dead animal on the side of the road and they will come and clean it up relatively quickly. I do feel like people also sometimes move the animals themselves. And I believe another reason is a, the people driving here are relatively aware. <laughs> That's why their driver's license are so expensive here, to be aware of your surroundings and to avoid incident as much as possible. And B, due to the way that the roads are set up, it's sort of preventing animals from getting harmed. There are underground tunnels for animals to pass. There are over road bridges for animals. There are fences that prevent animals from getting onto the Autobahn or just roads in general. It's just all of these pieces put together to create this puzzle that equates to less animals being victims of roadkill. So I don't think it's a bad thing. I don't think anybody should think it's a bad thing. And it's just something I notice. It's good for the animals, also good for the drivers as well, because hitting an animal at 20 miles per hour, 200 miles per hour is not safe for any party involved. The next thing that I've never seen in Germany are prisoners on the side of the highway or interstate picking up garbage. And this is something that depending on where you are in the United States, you might see it. In Florida, I've seen it many times where I'm driving down the interstate and right next door to where I'm driving, there are people with little orange vests on with garbage bags and pinchers picking up garbage and putting it into the garbage bag. And there's usually like maybe a little sign that says prisoners or jail people. I don't know what it says or a little cone trying to divide, you know, where they should stay and where we should stay in our cars. But since living in Germany, I'm like, this is dangerous. If something's happening on the Autobahn, if people are messing on the Autobahn, walking on the Autobahn, they make sure to push traffic. <laughs> you know, maybe that's why there's so much traffic in Germany. They make sure to like push people as far away from possible, away from the people that are doing work. And in the United States, it's like, oh yeah, there's prisoners right next door to you. And we know that you're driving 100 miles per hour, even though the speed limit's 70. We know you're speeding. We know y'all are driving reckless. And if you hit the people, then you hit them. Uh, and I'm like, it's just not something that you see here. I could, like I said, be totally wrong. And there could be people that are picking up garbage on the side of the Autobahn, but I'm pretty sure they won't be prisoners. Maybe I just need to look this point up before I start rambling on about it, but I could get into so much of a rant about this point, but I won't, I'll save that for another video. And yeah, if you're coming here and you see someone on the side of the Autobahn just roaming around, you should call the cops actually, unless there's a sign that says construction or something, or there's a sign warning you. But if you see random people on the side of the road in Germany on the Autobahn, let, 
911-110-112, what is the number for emergencies? That's where I'm calling. Hmm. The last and final item that you probably will never find in Germany is going to be a sprinkler system. And I've talked about German gardens before, but I don't remember if I've talked about sprinklers. And this is just something that you won't find here. And it's because German grass is real grass, unlike the fake grass that we have in yards in the United States. And if you would actually let grass grow and the plants and the weeds and everything create this biodiverse ecosystem that is supposed to exist in the world, then you probably wouldn't need sprinkler systems. And also depending on where you live, it's just artificial. You know, in Florida, in Arizona, you aren't supposed to have the sprawling green garden or the sprawling green yard due to the simple fact that it can be very dry, it can be very hot, and certain things aren't meant to last in that environment. And so it's just very interesting here that everything, you know, my yard, in my opinion, is very beautiful and we do not water it. We do not have a sprinkler system. We do the bare minimum to it and it is thriving. And the yard in my mom's house or anybody that I know, it's probably the most fickle thing that you could ever imagine. My grandma, when she lived out by herself in the little countryside, she did not have a sprinkler system as well. And the garden, her yard was beautiful. And so it always boggles my mind because most of the places that I know with beautiful yards in the United States do not have sprinkler systems or they have sprinkler systems that are doing an excessive amount of watering, which is also not the best for the environment. So I'm like, I don't know where the middle ground is, but you won't find that many sprinkler systems here. Some people do have them. Some people care a lot about their plants and keeping everything hydrated, moisturized, and looking as beautiful as it possibly can be. But I feel like the majority of people, they're like, I wanna save some money and I'm not gonna waste money or waste water <laughs> that equates to me having to pay more money. And so yeah, with that being said, that is the end of the video, you guys. I talked a lot. I have to go shower. I have to go get ready because tomorrow I'm waking up early to meet my friend for lunch. And so with that being said, I love y'all. Have a wonderful day and bye.